Hey everyone, it's Steve. I'm going to show you how to um, terminate station cabling. In other words, four pair you know, twisted uh, copper, solid copper wire um, onto a 66 block. Now this thing over here, that's a 110. We're not doing that today. We're doing this, 66 block. Alright, I've always been a little hesitant to make this video because I was worried that it wouldn't come out on the camera right and it may still not but I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a shot because I get this question a lot especially on another channel that I run which is called the Nortel guy which is all about Nortel phone systems and people are always asking me about this okay you got your four pair wire alright it's got your your blue your orange your green your brown usually this is referred to as station cabling if it's used for phones um, if it's used for computers then it's usually just called Ethernet cabling but in this case we're working with phones so we're gonna do uh, station cabling all right, so I've got my station cabling. You know, it comes in all different kinds of circumstances, but this set of cabling is two cables come out of the ceiling. They're going to go down onto this 66 block, and the reason they're getting terminated on a 66 block is because I'll be making jumper connections from a phone system, which is over that direction, uh, jumper connections from the station ports over to the station cabling, which will then go out and feed telephone instruments. All right, they would not feed computers. If you were doing this for c cabling for computers, you would be punching down on an Ethernet patch panel, not a 66 block. All right, what I like to do is um, is take my cable and fish it back behind the 66 block. And I like to go to the middle over on the side. There's like there's a there's like a couple of slots where the cable can come out on the side. I like to go in the middle because then I like to turn around and come back up like this and I get to have a little tension down here in this corner and and I just kinda guesstimate about where I'm gonna wanna have my wire be you know peeled back to and then I make my cut or not my cut but my stripping cut about three inches ahead of that I don't wanna make my cut right here my stripping cut here the reason is is because if I if I make a strip cut in here I'll probably nick the wires inside and that's a bad thing I'm gonna make my my stripping cut up here Okay, I'm going to pull back the skin like so. I'm going to get rid of some of this excess. Okay, I'm going to pull off the sheath. Now, inside most cabling, not all, but most, is usually this thing we call dental floss. It's a little bitty string. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It's a little bitty string. It looks literally like dental floss. And I'll pull it back. Actually, it usually helps if you make just an itty bitty little nick with your scissors in the edge of the, of the, of the cable jacket. The stuff on the outside, that's called a cable jacket and pull the dental floss into that little nick and it makes a nice smooth little tearing action and the reason that we do it this way is so that we never have to, to brush our scissors or cutting instrument up against the copper wires inside because this skin this blue orange green brown the skin on top of that copper wire is very thin alright so it nicks very easily so you see I've kind of pulled it back to just about where I'm going to want it and then what I do is I get rid of my excess jacket okay again being careful not to nick the uh, the actual wires inside I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my dental floss there all right now in order to terminate these guys I need what's known as a 66 blade actually that's the no cut version but this is a 66 blade okay if what you have looks like this that is a 110 punch blade that's not gonna work what you want is the 66 blade and 66 punch tools come in all different variations this happens to be a Harris Dracon kind of an industry standard I've had it for oh gosh I've had this one for at least at least over a decade or more okay so I got my 66 block uh, punch tool ready to go set that down for a second I'm gonna spread out my wire okay I got blue orange green brown that's the order they go now I have a separate video on the wire color code that if you're not familiar with the wire color code maybe you should go check that out but basically blue is gonna go first so I loosen up a little twist you know I, I take some of the twist out of the wire and I lay that across the first two pins now these pins I call these things pins there's 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 four across um, and they go down um, there's 50 of them uh, the pins have a itty bitty little hook in them, and I don't know if that's going to come out on the camera, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to pick up the camera and move it real close to where the pins are. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's going to show up in the video or not, but they have like little hooks on the edge of them. And what happens is the wire, when you, when you get ready to terminate these, you take the wire and you just kind of put it on the edge of those hooks. Okay, and it'll actually, if you pull a little bit like that, it'll actually just kind of stay like that. All right, now the right way to do this is before you start doing any punching is to fan out your wire first. So I did my blue, and now I'm going to do my orange. Now, the, again, the color code is, is key here, but it's white, blue, and then solid blue, and then white, orange, and then solid orange. Okay, and then my green, white, green, solid green. Okay, if, that, if what I'm talking about with the color code is not making any sense to you, go look at the other video I've got about the uh, telephone wire color code. Okay, that'll talk, talk about that. You need to, uh, to understand that for this to make any sense. All right, and then the brown. You know, and this loosening the slack, it's you just kind of have to get a feel for it. You know, it's like a lot of things in life. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing lousy for the first few times. So it's probably going to be awkward the first few times you do it. But at the end of the of the procedure, what you want is these all fanned out, kind of like stuck on those hooks. And I've got, you know, white, blue, and blue, white, orange, and orange, white, green, and green, white, brown, and brown. And with the tension that I've got on them like this, I can take my punch tool, and it's got the little cutty blade there at the bottom. So, and when you do this, you want you want the blade, the, I don't know how this comes out on the camera, but in the 66 tool, one edge is flat, and one edge has got like a little knife on it, okay? Whoops, sorry. One edge is flat, one edge has got like a little knife on it. You want the knife facing down, okay? Because when you cut, when you punch... Your punch tool should make like that little clicky noise because there's a there's a tension spring inside. That knife cuts the excess wire off. Okay, so okay, so these wires now. Every time I'm punching, that knife is cutting off the excess that I don't need. Now this is something that happens to you when you're doing it this way: is that sometimes the as you're pulling down on the wires you've already cut, they get stuck in the hooks of the previous one. Now. In a real production environment, because this is just my lab, normally if I was doing a bunch of st station cabling, I would probably fan them all out first and then just go back and visually check one more time to make sure I didn't mess up the sequence of the wire colors, and then I would just punch them all at once. And also, I'm punching twice, or sometimes I punch once. That's just kind of a habit. Sometimes some people punch twice, some people punch once. It, you know, Whatever it takes to get the job done or whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, all right. So that is a terminated uh, station cabling. And again, to recap, the reason I have this is because this wire goes out into the ceiling, goes across the ceiling, comes down some wall somewhere, and ends up in a telephone jack where the telephone gets plugged into. Okay, it's usually referred to as station wiring. I guess you could call it phone wiring. Um, and so then what happens is all your station wire terminates either on a 66 or it could be on a 110, but that's not what this video is about. Um, could even be on a Bix, which is common in, uh, in uh, Canada. Is that this wiring is then cross-connected. So you take another little set of wires and you put them on the next set of pins in the middle and you move them over to the phone system. So your phone system will have like, you know, ports 1 through 32 and then so you'll take port 1 and you'll make you'll punch down there then you'll bring the wire over and you'll put it down on the blue pair of this now normally each phone set will only get one cable and they'll actually only use these days just one pair um, there's nothing to say you can't split these up so I mean you could take one wire and you could put two telephone jacks at the end of it um, it used to be uh, years ago that typical digital telephone systems were using um, or hybrid systems were using um, three pair, so you'd have to use the blue, orange, green. And then AT&T for a long time was using all four pair. But now that they just use one, you can kind of get away with running one station cable down a wall, but put as many as four different jacks on it. And you just, you know, connect station one to blue, station two to orange, and station three to set, etc. All right, so I hope that helps dispel the mystery of terminating uh, station cabling on a 66 block. Thanks for watching.